Hi everyone, welcome to this walkthrough tutorial of Gravitas, our new Mastering Dynamics system. Gravitas is a compressor and expander with a lot of unique features. It's optimized for mastering, but it can be used for anything from single sources to groups, buses, and of course, whole mixes. It can process every format from mono and stereo all the way up to 64 input channels. Gravitas is divided into three modules. The upper module contains the usual set of controls you'll find in many plugins. You can load and manage presets, undo or redo actions, and switch between two states, A and B. Here you'll also find a special feature of Gravitas called the Parameter Linking Editor. The Parameter Linking Editor is a unique feature that lets you link parameters of different instances of Gravitas in your session. We'll cover this feature in detail in a separate video. There's a link in the description. Now a general note before going any further. If you want to edit the values of knobs and faders in the lower two modules, you'll need to right click on them. The module in the center contains all processing related controls. To the left of this section, we have the input gain slider and the input meters. By right clicking on the meters, you can expand them to show the name of each input channel, which really comes in handy when you're working on larger multi-channel projects. The button below the input meters opens up the input configuration dialog. This dialog has a number of details and we've covered them all in a separate tutorial video. Again, there's a link in the description. In the next section, we have four parameters by which you can shape the amplification curve. Well, actually there are two sets of these parameters, one for processing above the threshold and one for processing below the threshold. You can switch between these parameter sets by using the buttons below the curve display. Let's check out how this all works using Gravitas on a drum loop. When you instantiate the Gravitas plugin on a track, it already has a threshold set to negative 18 dB and a ratio set to five. Let's first pull down the threshold until compression kicks in audibly. Okay, so now the compression is quite hard. So let's turn up the knee parameter to soften up the transition. This way the drums enter into compression more gradually. Next, let's switch over to the other set of controls so we can process the signal below the threshold. Let's lower the threshold completely and raise the ratio to about five. Now let's gradually raise the threshold again until we hear the ringing of the drum set. At this point, we can also turn up the knee knob to get more of the ringing. The range knob sets the range in which the ratio is applied. Let's change it and see what happens. In the next section, we'll find our processing filters. They work like crossover filters in a multiband compressor, and only the band between the two filters is processed. The rest of it is just passing through. Let's unlink the detector filters and play a little bit to see how this affects the processing. When using this filter, be careful with the higher filter slopes, as those can introduce some phasing. Since the drum loop is in stereo, Gravitas gives us access to MS, or mid-side processing. Let's switch that on to hear how it affects our sound. Notice that the drums immediately become more present. 
Next, let's turn link down to have M and S compressed separately. Now stereo width is increased because M or the mid channel is compressed way more heavily than the S or side channel. This is because the volume in the mid channel is a lot higher. Let's say we're happy with the current stereo width in general, but we want the S channel to be more compressed, more dense. We'll do the adjustments to make this happen a little bit later. Now in cases where Gravitas sits on a multi-channel track, which contains one or more LFE channels, level controls for those LFE channels are shown. In the section to the right, you'll find the makeup gain slider and the auto makeup button. If auto makeup is switched on, Gravitas tries to match the input volume depending on the parameter settings. The mix slider lets you blend in some of the unprocessed signal for parallel processing of the dynamics. In the display of this section, you have the output meters, the gain reduction, and the increase meter with some additional controls. Those controls let you specify a maximum for gain increase and also a maximum for gain reduction. If one of these switches is switched on, like it is now for the gain increase, you can set the maximum value with the small slider adjacent to the meter. If we switch the gain increase limiter off, we hear even more of the ringing of the drum set because the gain increase is not limited at all now. Be careful when switching this off, especially if you are using the expander above the threshold because levels can get loud very quickly. The gain reduction limiter works just like the gain increase limiter. Okay, now let's have a closer look at the bottom module of Gravitas with the level detection related parameters. In the first section, you find the detector listen button by which you can listen directly to what's going into the level detection. So you can dial in exactly what Gravitas is going to be reacting to. Let's use this function to increase the volume of the S channel at the input of the level detector. This will get us more compression on the S channel. We do that by increasing the S channel's detection gain. Now let's turn the detector listen function off so we can hear the processed result. As you can hear, the stereo width is decreased because the S channel is now more compressed. To get the width back to where it was before, let's increase the S channel's level. Near the detector listening button, you'll also find a button for switching on the external sidechain input and the level detection input meters. I won't demonstrate these here as they are self-explanatory. The meters will only show the channel enabled in the detector input mixer section of the input configuration dialog. Now, I won't go into that here because we have a tutorial that covers the input configuration dialog in detail. There's a link in the description. In the next section, you'll find the filters by which you can filter certain parts of the signal before it goes into the level detection circuits. Now these filters can be linked to the processing filters in the center module, but for this demonstration, let's leave them unlinked. In a drum track like this, for example, the bass drum usually triggers the detection the most and therefore gets the most gain reduction, which leads to the bass drum sounding a little weak. So let's listen to the detector input and adjust the frequency range in such a way that the low end where the bass drum causes the most compression is excluded.
Now that we've got it dialed in, let's switch off the detector listening to hear what the track sounds like. Et voila. The bass drum is now way stronger. By toggling the detection filter on and off, we can hear the difference caused by the filtering. The next section contains the usual suspects for adjusting how level detection reacts, such as attack time, hold time, and release time. Let's experiment a bit with these parameters. We also have RMS time. You can use this to change the sonic character of detection and thereby make the processing resemble different types of analog compressors. Some devices react to peak levels while others react to the overall energy in the signal. And the RMS time lets you dial in how you want it to sound. We also have look ahead, which delays the signal in the processing module relative to the signal going into the level detection. This lets Gravitas see what is coming and start processing before the kick drum or other transient events have actually arrived. This means the processor doesn't miss the start of any peaks. As you may have noticed with this drum loop, you can dial in the look ahead and get a rhythmic compression pattern going if that's your thing. In the same section, you'll also find the 3DET button. When switched on, you will have not one but three level detectors working in parallel, and the three number buttons below let you select which of those three detectors you want to adjust. This kind of processing is inspired by the Amec Mastering Compressor. This compressor works in a similar way, where the three level detectors practically compete, and the one with the highest detected level will be used for processing. In Gravitas, you have, of course, access to all the parameters of each detector. With detection gain in the lower right corner, you can adjust the input gain of each detector for further fine tuning. Let's adjust the parameters of the first level detector to change how Gravitas reacts to the signal. If we make the attack and release shorter and gradually raise the detection gain, we can see and hear how the first detector gets more and more relevance for compression. As you might pick up from this short example, with Gravitas you have infinite possibilities for designing your dynamics and your sound. In the next section you'll find the running curve which shows you the detected level in relation to the two thresholds from the processing module. We've seen this in action throughout this video tutorial. In the last section you'll find two knobs, Link and Peak Mode. These knobs determine how Gravitas works on tracks with at least two channels. 
The knobs will not be available if you instantiate Gravitas on a mono track. First, we have the link knob, which determines the degree of linking between the channels. Let's check out how it works. First, let's switch off MS, open the input configuration dialog, and pull down the fader for the right channel until we hear that the processing of the left and right is different. The signal on the right channel enters with much lower volume into the detector and therefore is less compressed. Link is at 0%, so Gravitas acts like a multi-mono plugin. Now, let's increase the link all the way up to 100%. Now both channels are being processed equally, and we can have a look at how the peak mode knob affects the processing. Let's start from 0% and, while playing back, increase slowly to 100%. As you can hear, with peak mode at 100%, compression is much stronger. The reason for that is that at 0%, the average level of all input channels is taken, while at 100%, the loudest of all the channels is taken for determining the amount of processing that is applied. You can also set this parameter to negative 100%, which means the lowest level of all channels is used for determining the amount of processing that is applied. Gravitas is a plugin that you can use in your DAW like any other plugin. However, in addition to being a plugin, our Dolby Atmos Composer users can also have Gravitas as a module inside the Composer for processing their Atmos mixes. To learn more about Gravitas as a module inside the Dolby Atmos Composer, please watch our tutorial on this topic. There's a link in the description. And that's it for this video. Please check out our other tutorials about Gravitas, and if you like this tutorial, please give us a thumbs up and check out our other tutorials about the Dolby Atmos Composer. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to not miss our latest news, tips, and updates. There's more to come, so I'll see you in the next one.